Hello, everybody. Here we are again with Women Matters. We are meeting for quite a long time regularly, but this time we are in a new group and we want to talk again about the challenges we are living in these days. If you are interested, we already did a recording two weeks ago and go to the YouTube channel or to the website, thewisdomfactory.net. And there under Women Matters, you can find everything which we have talked so far. So I'm Heidi, um, I'm living in Italy and I'm quite fine. Finally, it rains and my vegetable garden is happy about that. So, so far it's my check in. Who wants to go next? Oh, I can give over. I give over to, to Gertraud. So I might be sneezing a lot because uh, spring is here. <laughs> so I was out for a walk and um, I can feel it in my nose. But it was great, <laughs> great sunny and windy. Um, I'm fine. I'm I'm fine at home. Staying here and not going to the grocery store because I don't want to to shock other people if I have to sneeze. And um, yeah, and busy. So there's a lot going on. And you are in Germany. And, but we don't. What we didn't have was uh, Zoom calls with my girls, with my family, once a week. So we didn't talk to each other all together once a week, and now we do. So it's really nice. Yeah. Did you have any other question? <laughs> I, no. I was maybe not, not present. I just to check in, and you are in Germany, because we are a little... But yeah, okay. Involved. I'm in the middle of Germany, north of Frankfurt. East. Who do you want to hear next? From Christina. Uh, good morning. Well, good afternoon. I don't know where everybody is, but uh, it's morning here. Um, I'm in Carlsbad, California, and uh, sheltering with my husband. We're doing fine. Um, the days go by quickly. Uh, he goes out probably once a week to run an errand, and I go out to do grocery shopping and that's been fine. Um, yeah, just wondering how long we'll be doing this here, all kinds of different <laughs> ideas being floated around. Um, even though life's not gonna go back to quote normal like it was before, still kind of um, primarily interested in when uh, we'll be able to return to work. Um, but I'm not really anxious about that. I, it'll happen when it happens. It's just that there's all kinds of chatter about it and uh, trying not to uh, put any big expectations on any one thing that people say because it just seems to be a moving target and we just don't know. But otherwise I'm fine. What do you want to hear next? Um, I would like to hear from uh, Anne. Hello, uh, I'm Anne. I'm new to this group, although I, I met Monai, Monai uh, on a call with Heidi and Farhawk uh, about a year and a half ago, I think. Um, I live in a little village just south of Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, and I'm retired, although I do um, quite a lot of things. I do research into elderhood. I'm particularly interested in this emerging time of elderhood as the baby boomer generation ages. Um, so we're doing fine. My husband and I live in, in the house and he's very good at going for the, the we call it the messages, the shopping. Um, and I'm well, we have a functional medicine doctor that we've been seeing for a while and she uh, checks in once a week with us and we've been given great uh, immunological um, guidance about how to hone that part of the physical part of ourselves and understand what we're doing to be well. So. Um, 
my daughter and her partner are both frontline care workers um, who haven't caught the virus yet and they have a two-year-old son. And so that's uh, capturing my attention. But again, fear doesn't do us any good. Um, I'm really clear on that. So just holding that we will find our way through whatever life is bringing forward. And I'm really into the cultural um, ramifications of this time, how we're going to shift as a global uh, community over time and what Mother Earth is bringing to us. So I've got lots I could say, but I'm looking forward to our call. I am complete. And now, Quinn, Quinn, Quinn? Have I pronounced that correctly? Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, you can just call me Quinn. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm calling from uh, Irvine, California. Um, I feel like the, to me, it's, uh, it's not so much about the virus itself, uh, the fear of safety or the fear of money. Um, to me, the number one theme that's uh, challenging me right now is my relationship with um, fellow people and my perspective on relationships and how I can change and evolve right now. I pass it on to, am I the last? I don't. Monia. Uh, oh, Monia. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Monia. I live in Vienna, Central Europe. And I've been sick for, with a heavy flu uh, for five weeks and I was sort of reduced to beige according to spiral dynamics uh, like a retreat and I know it has changed me and I live, I'm living with my husband and the children and the grandchildren live close by so we are well attended but my husband felt he had to go out shopping, and so I joined him, and we went to a big supermarket. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I belong to the high, highest risk group, and I hate that, but well, we'll see. And I'm wondering, and I'm also very much concerned about relationships right now, uh, how they develop and if surviving at any cost and giving up everything that's pleasant to you or important to you, uh, how this will develop. Okay, Heidi, I pass on to you. Okay, thank you. So we have set the stage for our conversation. How do we deal with uh, this situation? I. I'm not challenged in the same way as you are, Amonia, because you have already had an illness and so you feel uh, now you would probably like your children and your grandchildren around you and you can't. And um, that's really, really bad. I'm, I live alone and, you know, occupy myself uh, in the countryside. It is like a return to when I first came here about 30 years ago, I was five years only here around and enjoying animals and, and ground. And so um, I'm fine with being alone and having all these uh, contacts via internet. Without that, it would be mm, not so good. But uh, technology in this case is really good. And I try to not to listen too much to news and fear making uh, things, but try to get a perspective. I listen to various um, perspectives of people and then I, I don't believe any, you know, or almost any. 
and uh, try to find my way through. And as I said before we started, Daniel Schmachtenberger, I find him really a great uh, person in evaluating what is going on and um, uh, assessing the, how can you say, the sense, he's a sense making specialist um, of, of what is going on and what you can trust, what you cannot trust, how far your own personal bias uh, influences your uh, attitude towards uh, what is happening and what opinion you are adopting and not only you but even the so-called specialists and it's very interesting to to learn about these things as i said personally i'm fine and i'm wondering how how you are coping with these days You are unmuted, Anne. Do you want to continue? No, I would, I'm just, I'm not quite sure what the question is after the... It's not really it's a question. It's just uh, continuing what you already uh, brought forward. And uh, it's all about how we address the present situation in our own experience. What, what we use for sense-making, what we, what we use for t tools, you know, you, some, I think you were talking about fear. How, how do you mm -hmm. reduce fear and things like that? That's what is interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm having uh, quite a lot of fun, I have to say, <laughs> um, albeit um, in this time of um, unprecedented challenge because I'm doing a lot of reading and I've gone back to, I, so I should say, I've studied since 1996 a body of uh, Mayan teachings. Um, the Mayan culture brought forward 2012, I don't know, you know, the, this time of cosmic uh, revolution. Um, and I, since 1996 I've studied a body of teachings that come from that indigenous time. So I've been going back to what I call original thinking. What um, is this telling us about humanity and about evolution and about the arc of evolution, which I'm, I'm interested in? And so it takes me away from the micro to the metaphysical almost, uh, which I'm I'm interested in. Like you, Heidi, I've stopped watching the news because I, I I cannot sense fully into what ground stories are being shared from for me to fully understand them. The one piece of work that I have found, found very helpful was Charles Eisenstein's article called The Coronation. I don't know if you've seen that, which I found very helpful of capturing a lot of the complexity and basically saying that none of us really know. and. Um, so a reassuring that it's okay that none of us not 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 okay, um, but that's the the reality that is that um, this is um, emergent and is unknown, and um, Monet the, the the integral view of which worldview is interpreting what's happening. I I, I can. I can watch world, which worldview is speaking um, in the media, which I find very interesting and, and helpful. And in integral thinking, views are true and partial. And one of the training for me is to find out where I can find another viewpoint from another worldview that complements my understanding. I'm also part of a group called the Bright Future Now Network. Um, and I, there's about three or four hundred of us who are um, capable of explaining things to each other without getting um, caught in worldviews that we get attached to. You know, we can push the boundaries. So, um, I, I mean, I have to watch my thoughts sometimes. You know, I sometimes go, if I get this, I could die. You know, and, and so there is that reality, but then with my training, what is death? 
in the sense, you know, and, and quite a lot of the writing I'm reading is about the war on death that um, we as a humanity wage. And in my training, death is just a move forward of the spirit. So um, I could be really playful with all of that. And I'll stop there for now. So in our way of co-creative talking, you can take what you hear and spin it further or put yourself um, what you want to say in context with what has already been uh, at the moment. Monia and I, we have uh, brainstormed the co-creative uh, dialogues, but it's in German and it will come out on my website next, uh, next week. Um, but I hope to give you a little of this indication. So go ahead, when you have something to say, you are welcome. And the indication when you want to be next is that you unmute yourself and then mute yourself when you have finished. I think one of the uh, lessons we're learning again is that nature is in charge. Um, we are not. And as much as we try to believe we're in charge, uh, you know, we continue to have to go back to the lesson that whether it's climate change or a virus or something else that um, we are participants uh on this planet and this thing called life but we're not ultimately in charge and uh, I, th I think fear does make people try to control as much as they can to feel like they are back in charge but um, it is good to be mindful of not uh, not forcing uh, that sense of control just out of fear have, I have to remember that uh, I, I try to control things within my home or within my personal life. And I've got to remember, you know, not to um, impose that on my husband or impose that on other people. Um, I do hear rumblings also from people about kind of anger because we're all getting a little weary of, of doing the isolation. And of course, some people are not taking it as seriously as others. Um, so you, I've tended to see more of that uh, coming up and that may end up being a driver or a wedge uh, that has to be dealt with at some point in time. Yeah. was thinking one of the criteria for a co-creative dialogue is being comfortable with silence and not needing to, to talk all the time. So as this was a silent moment, I just wanted to bring that in. For who is watching later, it might be not so, you know, so nice to, to see us in, in total silence, but it's okay. Get all that. right, all right. Oh, God, you go ahead. I no, just... no, it's uh, go, go, go ahead. ahead. No. Um. Okay. Uh, as I was wondering before, and. As Anne said, nature is in, oh, as Christina said, nature is in charge. 
we are not. I'm wondering if surviving is the most important aspect of this situation or if there are other aspects like relationships uh, that may be more important how we deal with them. Uh, I've been talking to my grandchildren from the balcony because they live next block in the next block. So we are in contact. Uh, but there are other people who are so afraid that I might catch, that they might infect me, that they sort of retreat because I'm a high risk group. And this is something I really have to deal with right now. I'm wondering if Jing uh, Yang has something to say about relationships in this respect. Uh, I I would I would just say that I'm very well. I'm very much um, in the struggle of it. I I don't feel like I'm in a position to really step out and comment on my own situation yet. So for now, I'm just trying to really go through it all in a very um, material and mundane sense and not try to, uh, as opposed to, um, I think, um, going to metaphysical theories and, and um, kind of regressing to what I, I'm used to doing, such as using... Um, many different healing modalities to find resolutions to what's happening to me. Uh, what I'm doing right now is just to experience it all and see what happens. Yeah. Um, Monia, what you just said that people don't want to infect me or us i'm not high risk but higher than others <laughs> going to be 64. Um, i don't know how i how i would say that it's pure survival just to to have made it can't be the solution and at the other on the other side um just say okay i don't care can't be it either so so how to deal with these uh, yeah with with uh having those uh health risks and on the other side, having those the relationships. So I, I think it's it's like juggling with several balls at the same time, and and having the right yeah the flow or whatever that it's not the one or the other. How can we have an environment in which it is possible to to have the connection in a way that is not risking lives but it's not like retre uh, retreat altogether actually when you when you talked about it monia it, it was it reminded me of a family who lost their child a four year old to to meningitis or what is it called and people didn't talk to them anymore because they were afraid so the, talk to us and and tell us how 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 difficult it, it is for you or so but not isolate us to in order not to harm us or so it was really like, like the energy was the same when you talked about it. And actually for me, it's, it's, I have more phone calls with friends. I have more connection 
and being sick i think that's another <laughs> for five weeks so yeah um but there is more deep deep conversations than before that's what i i get and somehow nobody wants to go back to normal <laughs> There was an article in the in, in one of the rather conservative newspapers say it can't be it that we go back to the normal uh, economic situation when I see that six companies take all the money and get I don't know how many millions um, just because they can um, and there's nothing left for for the smaller businesses and you know like can that be to do management as usual just to take out as much as you can so yeah so how do we want to do business how do we want to do so it's it's like recreating everything because nothing is normal anymore and and that that's the juggling. Yeah, all our values, all our wishes, how can we juggle with them in a way that, that we create a new life that's working from everyone. That's what came to my mind. Uh, what I, uh, what came to my mind right away was Vienna has been flooded by mass tourism and now the city is livable again. On the other hand, the Austrian economy depends on tourism. So <clears throat> that's the juggling. But <clears throat> what really came to my mind today and really made me think is with regard to relationships, uh, if you kiss somebody, that may be dangerous to your life. If you have sex with him, uh, you can have a distance of uh, the, the, the demanded distance and yeah, there it goes. So the importance of breath, again, uh, and all of us know all of these exercises using our breath to get in a different state of mind. And all of a sudden, not being allowed to kiss somebody, you are really used to kissing. Yeah, it's a minor aspect, but it really hit me this morning. I want to reply to Gertrude. Yesterday I talked with Ulrike and she lost her husband two, two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Uh, not by Corona, but by a severe lung uh, problem. And we were talking about that, at least I observed that when my husband died, that nobody really talked to you, you know, uh, unless we did it on internet, but neither my brothers, sisters, no, you know, it's it's supposed that you don't talk about that because it's probably make too much fear in yourself. You don't know how to handle the other person. Can you ask them? Can you not ask them? And maybe it's reminding me of my own death. And so better keep the distance. But it's very hurting on the other hand when you are the part uh, who is uh, has the, the loss. Uh, and then, yes, with the relationships, you know, today people who try to find a partner, how do they do that? <laughs> I mean, it seems really a little bit complicated, no? And yeah, internet partnership, partnership, but is it that? Okay, that's what I wanted to add. I'd, I'd like to pick up on the piece of B. I, I'm in the 
heading for at risk, partly, and my husband's definitely in the at risk group. And I, I want to volunteer. I've been looking for a way, how can I help, you know, in terms of relationship, how can I reach out? And I volunteered on probably six or seven local sites. And each time it's, you're in the at risk group, uh, thank you very much, but dot, dot. So, um, so I've written again and said, well, I'm trained in Zoom. I can he tech host. I've been helping people locally to um, access Zoom so they can relate with their families and what have you. And I've really enjoyed doing that. You know, I've got one man and he's 83 and he, he now can uh, be in relationship with all his grandchildren. And, and that's very rewarding to see him doing that. So at the relationship level of, you know, wanting to reach out um, and also my life is, online is is very busy and i've more really and i'm having virtual cups of tea with cousins and aunties and um and it, it's lovely but you know one thing charles eisenstein said you know that a human being is not the box and that you miss the that physical energetic connection of being with someone in the physical realm I'm really missing my grandchildren physically. That's, um, I wrote to my daughter yesterday and said, I hope he doesn't forget me. And then we had this game this morning where she FaceTimed me and we looked at effects. And so Noah and I put funny faces on and he's only two and we laughed and played. And I was really touched that she thought a way of how can I get Noah to engage with you in this virtual realm? Which was, was really lovely. And the other thing around relationship is we have a weekly uh, family quiz night where we get together and we play games online. And we've been really clever at how to use Zoom to make the games work. So I do get the relationship piece as so fundamental to mental health, to the well-being. Not the hugging. <laughs> I'm still wondering, because of now that uh, restaurants may open in May, how people are willing to reduce their income, their business. And I guess it isn't possible without reducing, uh, because we have been on such a high level uh, of stress, stress level, of making money that you have to reduce somehow. But it's easy for me to say. <coughs> but I'm retired and... Yeah. If you are now just working part-time, it's hard on you. But still it's a solution. You know, I'm, I'm, I think several people have mentioned how will things change um, after this is over, what things will remain permanent about how we want to live our lives differently. And I guess I'm, I'm not expecting or hopeful about any big systemic change. Um, that would be great. Um, and I could lend my voice to that if, if uh, that becomes an option, but I'm assuming business will win out, um, money will win out, and uh, we will kind of get back on that uh, merry-go-round again of uh, earning a living. But um, for myself, I guess what I hope uh, will be a more permanent change just for me 
is to, to try to do things more slowly, try to do a little bit more without. So rather than feeling like I have to have, and I'm not even talking about material things necessarily, I'm, I'm talking about also experiences out in the world. Um, you know, extra activities and events and going here or going there. Um, maybe I will choose to kind of keep things a little bit more simple. I guess we're talking about simplification, um, feeling good about doing with less um, and being okay with that. And that does take a mind shift um, to accept that. But uh, I guess that's what I'm hoping. And I guess, you know, also to, to go back to what Anne said about, you know, how this all fits into my own philosophy about life and evolution, um, trying to give more thought to that and more primacy to that as opposed to feeling too caught up in just day-to-day -day matters, but, but welcome the opportunity to kind of think about uh, higher and, and bigger things besides myself. I'm noticing several things in my life, although I'm really not much touched by the difference uh, of life before and now, except when I go shopping once a week, which I did before, but before I could go to the farmer market, farmer's market, now I can't because it's not there. And you have to wear the mask, the mask and stuff. But I'm noticing that I'm more appreciating for instance, when I'm looking out and it's all green and now it's raining finally, I often before was sort of pretending that it needs to go as I want to. Why doesn't it rain? It should rain. And if it doesn't rain, it blah, 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 that summer will be. And now I think, oh, great, it's raining, you know. Or other thing, when I'm preparing the websites or whatever I do, before I had to do it because I ordered it to myself that I have to do it and I always suffered uh, the a pressure on that. You know, that was how I was growing up. Uh, you always have to do things and then you put yourself under, under pressure and you have to accomplish everything. Now I do it, also the garden and the outside work which I'm doing, and I do it. I just do it and I sort of like it even because all this resistance goes away, this uh, idea that I have to do it for whatever reason, you know? So I really appreciate the shift in, in energy that now I feel more that I can do it, that it's great that I can do it, you know? It's, it's a, I feel it as a shift in consciousness and I'm grateful. What just came to me is that we are spread all over the globe and it's the same, the same questions uh, each of us is facing. So uh, if there ever has been one unity of humankind, that's now the change, the, the chance. It would also be the chance that if everybody loses, it's not a big problem, but if only some lose and uh, the others win, that is a problem. So I don't know how that can work out. What do you mean by some lose and others win? I mean, uh, if, if we all have to reduce our our lifestyle in some way, no, not flying everywhere and so on, that's not a problem. But if, for instance, only the Americans or only the Germans or only the Italians uh, uh, cannot do what they did before and the others can, that would be a problem. But in, if the whole world has to reduce the consumption and also, you know, the spreading of poisons into the air and everything, that would be really great. But 
when we do it all at the same time. That is a, ch a chance, in my opinion. For me, the word precious comes through my mind. Like, life is not a given. <laughs> it's something to appreciate and something precious. And when you go out and see nature, it's precious. And when there are dolphins back in Turin, in the, in the harbor, that's because of all the big ships, they, they never came and, and now they come back and, and, and you see them from the town. So, or clean water again in, in the Atria. So, somehow there's something that, that this preciousness, this this um, vulnerability that is not a given anymore. And, and I think that's not the cause is a good thing, but this effect is something that, that I really um, think that landed with more people than before. And I'm seeing my husband like going, he's a photographer and, and he's now going out here and, and comes back with little flowers and all this. So he, or on the balcony, he's doing so many different, um, so something he didn't have time and he was not like, um, yeah, so so he went out and had big events and this and that and and the busyness was is reduced and, and now he can really look at small flowers at different things and and I'm meditating so much more than before. Just to reduce the, the tension and the adrenaline and everything. I really like this. I don't like why we do it, <laughs> but, uh, but that's good for me. So that, that's lovely. That just took me into a call I attended last night with um, a German uh, mystic called Thomas Hubel, some of you may know, he, he did a call last night and there must have been thousands of us on the call and, and someone asked a question around how do you um, work with fake news, what's not true? And he basically said the only thing you can do is to be authentic in yourself. And I, it really touched me somewhere in my chest around um, if every one of us is behaving with integrity, with truthfulness, we're sending out an energy that counterbalances um, that which is not. And, and, and it just as you were talking, it just made me remember that. And because I was thinking about all the people in other countries who do not have the possibility to self-isolate, the, the people who do not have enough food, you know, and I, and I could get very overwhelmed by the privilege that I sit in when I see all that's out there. And if I can be as authentic and as committed and moving my energy out into life, I am playing my part to the best of my circumstances and my capability. And I'm meditating a lot and watching my thoughts 
And, you know, just this thing about relationship again is, you know, when David and I go out for a walk once a day and we have a route that we do, um, and I always say hello and thank you to people that move aside for us because we're seen as, as the at-risk group. And the other day I was out walking and a lady didn't have her dog on a leash and the dog jumped up on me a, a couple of times and I could feel the threat, you know, and I didn't, I didn't handle it particularly well in my own energy. I got cross and I had to come home and um, really work it in the sense of um, this wasn't personal. Um, and I, I found myself going online and saying, what are the rules around dogs? You know, and then I caught myself and thought, no, I, I don't want to play that game. You know, it was it was unfortunate, but I'm pretty robust. I've never felt more vital than I do at this point in my life in terms of wellness. And if a dog jumps up on me, I think I can be okay with that. So manage your thoughts, be integrous and be as expansive as you can be was the message. I noticed for myself that if anybody is familiar with the Enneagram, I, I'm an Enneagram one. So that's the type that likes things to be kind of in order and perfect. And uh, I'm a rule follower. So uh, in my neighborhood, uh, when I'm out for a walk, I see every day about the same time at the end of the day, some young families bring their children out to the street and the kids ride bikes and scooters and skateboards while the grown-ups have a beer, uh, basically in the middle of the street. <laughs> and, you know, there's that, the Enneagram one part of me wants to say, you shouldn't be doing that. That's not social distancing. Um, and I've, toyed with the idea of should should I say something to them? Should I do something about that? And, and essentially, I kind of just came to a place of saying, you know, I'm safe. I'm at the other end of the of the sidewalk from these people. Um, but a kid actually did almost run into me. So that that that's similar to the dog. I had the same reaction as this kid who, you know, came within a few inches on his uh, scooter. Um, but yeah, so I, I see various things. I go to the store and, and not everybody wears a mask, even though they're supposed to. So that the Enneagram one uh, fights uh, against that. And I have to uh, keep asking myself, how do I want to show up with that? How do I want to be with that? Um, to think it through and not just uh, just not react. I find this interesting because I heard lately that in Germany the accusations um, start that people denounce others who are not uh, following the rules and Germany is quite an Enneagram one uh, uh, like, you know, one and six I think is Germany. <laughs> Do you know anything we about that? Culture. <laughs> Well, that makes sense. I'm half German. So there you go. <laughs> uh, there is the old German tradition, uh, the Blockwart. I don't know what's in English, but the, that's the one person who's watching that everything is all right. And my husband also likes to stand on the balcony and look around and see if everything is all right. Uh, but he doesn't take it very seriously. So he knows that he is like that. And, but we have a cartoon strip about that in one of our leftist papers. And so that's something that's in you and you sort of tradition and you can't stop it. 
Yeah. Uh, my daughter has a dog and whenever she sees me, she just gets out of bounds because she loves me so much. So when I walk to the doctor, <clears throat> I said, okay, 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 just sit, 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 sit. But she doesn't, she has to uh, yeah. show her appreciation. And that's the way a dog is. Other person. And dogs don't transmit the virus, so <laughs> don't fear. I was just thinking on what Anne said. Um, this morning I had a coaching and it, it was not about the corona, it was about um, Um, a woman who is very um, aggressive towards her and and something like letting it in and then fighting it here somewhere and and so we did something like um, you you know the ahimsa this this true nothing in me wants to harm you or there's this peacefulness and and so she expanded her aura her way of being that way and then she said this is cool <laughs> now she's out of my garden now she's out of my and and i thought i just thought like if we if we expand our way of um yeah on one side resilience, but on the other side also the peacefulness and the and and our worth, uh, our values. Then maybe we don't have to do much. <laughs> Just this, this, like expanding our aura of of this energy, and so when a lot of people are doing this, maybe it it's coming together as a whole. And Gladwell, he said, Malcolm Gladwell with the, the, in the book Tipping Point, he says, we need 10% of the population that it's um, non-reversible, the new, what the new is, what the new wants to be. So that's coming through my mind just now. What do you mean by non-reversible? Like 10%? He says when 10% of a population have the new the, uh, developmental stage or the new what wants to emerge then it might take years till it gets there but it's not so he he was looking at all kinds of stuff and and he was saying as uh, when there's 10 percent of the population that like the earth is flat <laughs> And then there's one person and says, no, it's not. And, and then there are more. And if 10% of the population, you cannot turn the clock back. You, this is inadvertently um, come to fruition, this new way of looking at things. It doesn't mean it's right away, but, uh, but it's not. Um, so we only need 10% to have the new age starting and you cannot go back to the middle ages anymore so that's that, what ken wilber said all the time no he said 10 percent it was uh, all changes were about the 10 percent mark and um also the when postmodernism came on and also um renaissance so what we are yeah, doing Gladwell did some research on it too. Mm -hmm. so. so what we are doing is trying to get to to add ourselves to the to make the ten percent and try to 
find people and connect with people and to get them into the 10% too. So that's a, a big hope I have, I have really. Is this answering your question, Queen? Okay. So we are talking almost an hour. I, I wonder if there is something else which wants to emerge. Otherwise, we do a short checkout and see what's coming up. So I just have one final question is, what do you do with an asserted position? You know, when someone says you should wear a face mask, and I follow a blog of a doctor who um, is about gut health, and she says face masks are really unhealthy. Interesting, so two, two viewpoints. Um, uh, 10 years ago, my husband had the swine flu vaccination and he became seriously ill after the vaccination because it was grown on egg albumin that had, we think, E. coli, you know, so it was grown on a medium that wasn't healthy. So I've had experience of vaccines being not good. And obviously vaccines can be good, you know. So again, and I've spoken with the doctor we works with and she says, we, we can accept the vaccine and I'll give you a regime before and after that means that the pieces in it, they call them adjuvants apparently, you know, heavy metals and what have you, we can detox them from your system, you know. So I, I, can, I can do that. Um, so, I'm, and then how do you say dogs don't give you the virus? And that's an asserted position. And I've read that it can survive on the uh, on the skin of animals, you know. So I just play with um, how do I work with these asserted positions, and how do I discern where I can function with it without getting to confusion and complexity and and i'm not saying right or wrong i'm just saying that's a reality in this time of working with so many asserted positions i'd be interested what others feel around that i want to bring it to a different level why don't we do everything to get our physiology in place so, so that we uh get our immune system healthy and strong. Then a little bit of a virus doesn't do anything. I mean, I have the experience when I still went to the German school in Rome, everybody uh, was sniffing and had the flu and so, and I am taking vitamin C for years, every day about a, a little spoonful of the powder, and I never had anything. So, and when I told them, take vitamin C, and ah, yeah, yeah, but they never did. So I'm asking, why don't we see and check up uh, how we are in terms of, um, of immune system? There are many, many supplements, natural supplements, who help to just not get the viruses, and not only corona, also others. So, um, you know, and other illnesses. That's what I would answer to that. It but isn't it, that easy. It isn't that easy. I, no. haven't, I haven't had a flu or a cold in years. And mm -hmm. now, exactly at this time, uh, I started one. And so actually the whole Corona affair passed me by. And I'm wondering what is the sense of that? Uh, yeah. But I'm I, was so, I was so sure that I could, uh, with my mental powers, I could override any kind of influence, uh, negative influence. And there I was, down to beige. So I did learn something. <laughs> what I'm asking, did you do the analysis of your blood? How much vitamin D do you have? Uh, how much, uh, all these levels, and uh, did you do... But what is missing, did you add it and things like that? Because it's not only mental, it's also physical. So Gertrud, you are, it's your turn. Yeah, I, I, I get what you want to say, but you're becoming assertive as well. So 
so it's it's like my father never smoked one cigarette in his whole life and he became lung cancer so uh, he got lung cancer so so it's yes and no i think both there there is is something like responsibility for our own health but it's not like 100%. We are not, like Christine said, it, we are not in charge on a level that we can say nothing will happen because I did this and that. It, I mean, life is dangerous at a certain level. Yeah. So, and, you, and, and saying when you do this, you, know, you don't get sick, that doesn't work also and your right to support this yeah. but it's <laughs> never 100% and 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 i think it's a high brace or what you call it to um yeah to i i think there there is more for me there's some humility in this to to really say okay I cannot make life. Life is given to me and I have to take care of it as good as I, as well as, as I can. And I don't know, my brother died at 16. So when I said that it's not because I said that is the only recipe, but I see that many people don't uh, take care for their body. And then, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. that's what I, and when you have to evaluate, do I get the vaccine, which has a high risk, especially when it's quickly made and not yet no. really yeah. secure, or do I do something which uh, heightens the probability that I don't get the virus? You know, yeah. that's, you have to, to evaluate what is, what you think it's better. And I was more reacting to the way you said it. It became more and more assertive. So I wanted to. <laughs> and, and you're right on the other side, yes. Okay, good. On the other hand, I don't know if we will be able to refuse getting a vaccination because I'm also very hesitant about being a high-risk group. And my aunt got every who turned 103 before she died. And uh, she got a vaccination every year. And afterwards, she always had a cold. Uh, so I, I wonder if we will be, yeah, if we'll be allowed to refuse uh, a new vaccine, which we don't really know about. And yeah, that's just one of the questions. But it's much harder for me not to kiss, <laughs> to get vaccinated. Okay, this is my checkout. My voice gave several times. I'm sorry about that, but it was a pleasure listening to all of you. And sort of, yeah, it's, it's sort of comforting to know that many other women all the world over, not just a few of us, uh, will be about the same authenticity about their lives. I do hope that. I just want to thank you all for showing up today and, and sharing your thoughts and your hearts. Um, and I certainly wish you uh, continued health and recovery, uh, Mania, um, and good mental health as well as physical health. Uh, the theme, um, man proposes, God disposes, um, came up at the end for me. I feel like there are many things that we can do to even either combat the virus or uh, resolve loneliness. But I feel like, um, like uh, and um, brought it up in the beginning, um, complementing that is an acceptance of whatever happens, whether it's death or is a control by the government. So I feel like if we can integrate both, then that might be the optimal solution.
So I'd just like to touch into a celebration of this time as relationship building and getting to know you. Um, and I always enjoy hearing other perspectives. I particularly love intergenerational forums. So the more that I can touch with the young, as well as my own, um, I feel opens my understanding and uh, I look forward to joining you again. Thank you. And thank you, Heidi, for calling us together. Yes, me too. Thank you, Heidi. And it was so great to see you again, Manya. <laughs> and swift recovery, full recovery. And uh, yeah, to see you anew, Anne. This was nice, and and now you are kind of new but familiar faces, Quinn and Christine. Great to see you again, and um, we'll see each other in two weeks, don't we? Yeah, we have to decide when we meet again. I think we sent out a, a doodle. Yeah, I think it's very very good to 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 talk in smaller groups together, and to even have a little bit controversy. I think that's good because otherwise we think, oh, everybody's saying the same and uh, we are in our bubble. So it's fine. And I really enjoy the presence of you all and the input which is coming. So thank you for the moment and we see again. <laughs>